In my apartment, the girl stood perfectly still, her gaze slowly crawling over the lay of my living room. Was she not used to seeing other people's homes? Or was it just that it was a man's abode? Try not to stare too much, would you? I really have gas, so it's a bit of a mess. It looks quite clean to me. Huh. And that's the last thing I expected to hear from you. But if a teenage girl say so, then it must be true. It's been bothering me for a while, but could you please stop acting like I'm a child? Oh, right. You're in your twenties. I forgot. Then I better give you the adult treatment instead. When you gave me the umbrella yesterday, you said you lived nearby. Huh? What about it? It is close. Not even a 30 minute drive. Are all grown men compelled to downplay their struggles? Or is it just you? I took that to mean you live maybe a few minutes away. This is hardly what I would call in the neighborhood. Partway through the cab ride, I began to suspect you were actually kidnapping me. Uh, I would do no such thing. As I told you on multiple occasions, I'm not a creep. I'll show my ID if that would make you feel any better. Got my driver's license, passport. I'll even dig out my birth certificate if you want to see that. I have nothing to hide. For the last time, I'm only providing you shelter until whatever's going on blows over. You can go home. To then, you're free to make yourself at home here. You're inscrutable. Excuse me? Who are you calling inscrutable? I'm just offering you some hospitality. The sun treatment. Well, whatever. Must be hungry. Be anything fancy, but I'll throw dinner together. Oh, but you're going to want to get changed first, huh? You guys think I stayed in a wet dress, looking like you're cosplaying for Wendy's. Give me a minute, I'll go find something. <laughs> I have to look at my screen, I'm like, did it really just say that? <laughs> no, you needn't bother. I needn't bother? What's with the sudden stuffy act? I thought you had a sassy retort for everything. Anyway, I'll go grab a towel and some clothes. You sit down till I get... Hold on. You kind of... What? Get, get away from me. Really smell. Ugh. How long has it been since the last bathe? I thought the apartment smelled kind of weird when we got in, but no. It was just you, I guess. S smell? As in, I stink? Correct. You smell like a wet dog. It's impressively foul. Uh. The shower's right there. Go clean up all that nasty junk off you. You can toss your clothes in the washer while you're at it. In my life, I've met a woman in her 20s who let herself go around smelling like a damn animal. But in... Pardon? Burn in hell, you fiend. Seems a bit excessive, I think. A few minutes later, I heard the sound of running water coming from the bathroom. As off as the girl was, it seemed at least... Knew how to use a shower. So she hadn't been raised by wolves in the forest. That was a relief. After checking to make sure the door to the shower area was properly closed, went to the bathroom and put a freshly washed shirt and pair of pants in a basket by the sink. It probably wouldn't fit her, but I didn't keep any small clothes on hand, so she would just have to make do. It was honestly rather strange hearing sounds that weren't mine at home. When I told the girl I rarely had a guess, truth was, I never did. I was sort of more social back before I moved to France, but had made any friends here close enough to invite over. 
the mission of the woman I met at the bar today, Maria, flashed into my mind. Supposedly it wasn't our first encounter, but I sincerely couldn't remember bumping into her before. At first I thought her merely loud and overbearing, but by the time we parted ways, I, caught, I had grown quite comfortable with her. Once someone had left a bad impression on me, it was rare for it to ever improve. I certainly never that quickly. Perhaps I could invite her over sometime. We could chat over drinks again. That might be fun. I'm getting each other our numbers, though, and I doubt if we accidentally run into each other for a third time, so maybe not. But for now, I needed to focus my attention on the girl. How long did girls or Asia usually spend a shower? Unfortunately, I didn't have any sisters or younger cousins as I was growing up, so I had no idea what to expect. I just knew it felt like she was taking forever in there. So I figured I should go ahead and make dinner in the meantime, to take my mind off the waiting. Hmm. Guess there would do. You better have had an, added the sauce before making sure I had enough tomatoes. Tastes fine though. Now to wait for the water to boil. Ugh! Christ! I didn't see you there. Could have said something, goddamn. Hold on. Some clothes on, for God's sake. This is not how you conduct yourself in a stranger's house. You, you did see that set pants for you too, right? You could fit two of me in one of those pants. And the legs are so long I'd almost certainly trip in them. So I decided it was more comfortable to not wear them. It, that doesn't mean you can go around only wearing... And why is that? The shirt is long enough on me to be a dress, so I don't see the problem. Everything about it is a problem. You're a young girl, carelessly exposing your legs to an older man. Ah, uh, so you're insinuating my attire has caused you to have untoward thoughts about me. You are a degenerate and a repulsive human being. But what? I am not having untoward thoughts about you. I just mean you, you won't have anything to blame by yourself for dressing like that if something happens to you. Yes, yes, that's what all the sex offenders say. You blame your victims for wearing and revealing clothing and claim no responsibility for your own actions. A man is allowed to dress like a slob whenever he pleases, but a woman must be prim and proper at all times? Is that what you're saying? Christ, she's relentless. Damn it, Chocobo. Calm yourself down. She's a goddamn child. A bit of leg isn't going to do anything for you. Deep breaths. Calm motion waves. <laughs> Make a fair point. It's not as though you're in a any way physically attracted to me. I take by what I said. Just as slovenly as your heart desires. You can roll about nothing but your underwear and won't faze me. Then perhaps I shall. Don't even think about it! I'm kidding. I would like to maintain at least a degree of modesty. Wearing nothing but I sure it counts as modesty to you. So, what is it you're making? Hmm, uh, oh, it's spaghetti meat sauce. Nothing exciting. Just throwing together a quick store-bought meal. I never realized a quick store-bought meal involved cutting fresh onions, cooking fresh ground beef, and crushing fresh tomatoes. This is most educational. Does every word that comes out of your mouth have to be dripping with sarcasm? This isn't close to a proper homemade sauce. But yes, that is a bit big on you. You should change back into your clothes when the laundry is done. 
And don't you dare suggest there's some deeper, sinister meaning there. I just can't imagine something that Luz could be comfortable. Yes, whatever you say. Do you have any women's clothing I can use then? You're Italian, are you not? Huh? So I assumed you would have a few spare outfits lying around for one night stands. Hey, watch it! Just because I'm Italian doesn't automatically mean I'm promiscuous. You're not popular with women then? Why does it have to be one or the other? How did you know I'm always Italian anyway? We're both speaking French, and I haven't used any other language in many months. The majority of people in these parts were some form of Latin or European. It would be easy to pinpoint someone's nationality by their appearance. Did I have an accent then? I felt like my pronunciation was fairly standard, but maybe I wasn't the best judge of that. She cocked her head to the side, seemingly unsure how to answer which likely meant it wasn't something as obvious as an accent. Now that you mention it, I'm not sure. I just thought you were from the moment I saw you and never considered otherwise. How strange. Huh. Curious, but not unbelievable. I suppose. In any case, yes, I am from Italy. Are you familiar with Sicily? She nodded. I was born in Sicily, but I only lived there for a few years. As a kid, I was constantly moving all over to Italy, and now I'm here for work. Do you ever feel like going back? To Sicily? No, never. There's nothing there, not even fond childhood memories. And I hate family gatherings. She felt silent for a minute, muttered, I see, under her breath and then didn't pursue it any further. Which, honestly, I was grateful for. I didn't particularly enjoy talking about my family. Evidently, some generations back, our ancestors had ties to the Mafia, and that reputation still came with the name today. As a child, the other kids tended to keep their distance, hence no fond memories of that period. We lived in mostly rural areas, so rumors spread quickly and mercilessly. This in turn led to difficulty at school, trouble graduating, even became an obstacle finding work. It was like every little single thing I did was being monitored everywhere I went. I could feel their stares, see them waiting to pounce at any slip up. It was suffocating. And when it did screw something up, it was like all living up to your family's name, I see, from every direction. I had no prospect in that country. It would make damn sure of that. So I left as quickly as I could manage. I expected the girl to say something snippy in response, but she stayed uncharacteristically quiet. I felt wrong not hearing anything sarcastic coming from her. Uh, but that's not really a story for now. Dinner will be ready soon, so take a seat elsewhere and wait. There's a TV in the living room. You can watch whatever you want. She gave a curt nod, then trotted out into the living room. Man, it really throws me off my balance when she's not fighting me at every junction. Huh, that's a PS4. Hey, there Freeze, is. ready? Yeah, I see it? I see it. What the hell are you doing? When I step out... Onto the living room with two plates of fresh spaghetti. Spaghetti. I was greeted with the girl staring at the remote, still as a statue. At the front, I did for a while. She turned her head up to face me. You told me to watch TV, but I can't figure out how to use the remote. I push the button, but it won't come on. Uh, what on earth was she talking about? She didn't know how to use a remote? She couldn't be serious. Uh, oh, do you not have a TV at home? I guess can't do everything on a computer and phone these days, so you wouldn't necessarily need one. I don't have a computer or a phone either. 
What kind of life have you had, girl? Christ! It's the 21st century for God's sake. Are you secretly an old woman? Or Amish, maybe? How do you keep track of your schedule? Buy plane tickets or reserve your seat at the movie theater without a smartphone? How rude. You can use an agenda to track your schedule, buy plane tickets at the airport, and buy movie tickets at the theater counter. It sounds like you're too reliant on your phone. Yeah, Fine. I will reluctantly give you that you can live without one. But it deprives you of a great many conveniences and luxuries. Modern civilization is built under the assumption that everyone has th these devices. There are accommodations you simply cannot make use of off it. You don't keep up with the times to a certain degree. Not everyone sees the world the same as you. And for all your insistence, and for all your insistence, I do. You don't seem to be getting much enjoyment out of the life you're pushing. God damn, child! Forget it. Just give me the remote. Look, the red button turns it on and off. Then you push the numbers to change the channel. See? That's all it took. You could not even work out that much by yourself. There are too many buttons. What are all the other ones doing there if that's all you need to turn it off? Obviously, you need to be able to set recordings, browse the guide, connect it to the internet, and so on. That's too complicated. Why can't it be more straightforward? Hmm. <laughs> Then you just have to get an old-fashioned TV that can't record anything and only has a couple of channels for your home. I can't. Huh? Why can't? I stopped myself before finishing the question, though. I was talking to her like I would an adult, even though she was still a child. Hugh unconvincingly insisted she was in her 20s. It was a safe to assume she didn't have these things by choice. That she didn't own a phone or a computer because she didn't want one. Her parents' shadows hovered behind her. They were complete unknowns in this equation. But if her parents wouldn't let her have these things, that was that. A fact that slipped my mind to just now. Hey, uh, do your parents... The TV is quite an obnoxious device, isn't it? So many people talking all at once. It gives me a headache. Did she just change the subject on me? Well, if she didn't want to talk about it, then it would be best not to push the issue. However, I was fairly certain that was where I would find an answer to why she had been sleeping all alone in the park in the rain. The question was whether I would actually involve myself enough to get that out of her. A question I didn't want to consider right now. Well, we can always change it to something else. There are channels that do nothing but play music, like a radio. That'd be better, I'm guessing. I switched it over to a music channel. A woman in a high-pitched voice was singing to poppy music. Never heard of the, her before. The song was rather grating, I thought, but it seemed like something a girl her age would be fond of. I don't like her voice very much. I think I would rather listen to classical. Change it to that. I could have been further off the mark. I knew nothing, I knew next to nothing about her, but it it looked like I wasn't going to get anywhere, apply my ideas of what a normal teenage girl was like to her. What are you laughing about? <laughs> oh, nothing. So, classical, huh? Not a bad choice. That's my favorite kind of music after jazz. I see. And here I thought you were going to whine about it. Hey. Do I really seem like such a petty man to you? Anyway, you're the one who does all the whining here, but never mind that. What I wanted to say originally is, dinner's ready, though it's gotten kind of cold by now. I meant to warm it back up. Do you know what a microwave is? Of course I do. Don't belittle me. It was a genuine question. I still didn't have a solid grasp on what she did and didn't understand yet. She sat down at the table and stared intently at her plate of spaghetti. Surely she actually knew how to eat it, didn't she? I gestured with my chin for her to start eating, and she slowly reached down to pick up a fork, 
like she was afraid it would bite her or something. What you ever felt like? It felt like I'd taken a stray cat. Did that mean I was not trying to win her trust with food? <laughs> that was one hell of an image. Once you finally got the first bite down, I started in on my own. It wasn't cold yet, but I was a step above lukewarm, and the noodles were harder than al dente, far from ideal. And it tasted, well, barely average. If I had had the proper ingredients, I could have made a meal befitting of the music, but alas. I really should have stopped by the store on my way back. Stop, what the hell, Jackabo? Do you want to cook a full three-course meal for a damn stray? Like you said, a quick store-brought dinner is more than good enough for her. The kid's not going to be grateful no matter what I make her anyway. It's good. What? Oh, I'm glad to hear it. You look flabbergasted. I just didn't expect you to say anything nice about it. But don't think this is the best I can do. You hear me? I can make a real respectable meal too. I'm very particular about both my ingredients and my spices. I see. I think this is very good as it is though. Oh, you do? Well, uh, th thanks. Why am I, why am I the one thanking her? Christ. Strikes me I haven't cooked for anyone else in a long time. Or anyone, anyone for that matter. Oh, that's a shame. Although I haven't shared a table with anyone in some time either. Comments like that made me want to ask her about her home situation. But I swallowed my words along with a mouthful of spaghetti. What she did say was enough to infer that things weren't especially pleasant for her there. I thought all I could do was guess about how exactly how bad it was. After that, we ate our dinners in silence. It was an oddly comfortable, relaxing kind of quiet. It made especially curious considering the circumstances. I was sharing it with a teenage runaway while classical music played in the background. Yet somehow, I found a sort of deja vu. I knew for a fact I'd never met the child before. I knew for a fact I'd never been in this situation before. But still, I knew it from somewhere far, unimaginably far in the past. The girl's mercilessly sharp tongue as well as well her tendency to turn meek and inconsiderate at a drop of a hat. Above all else, the countless times like this we shared. After we finished eating, I went to went to take a quick shower. By the time I was out, I'd gotten rather late. The girl's sitting on a couch, eyes locked in the TV, which was still playing classical music. It was a shame the channel only broadcast nature photographs to accompany the music. Footage of an orchestra performing a piece would really round out the experience. But as a simple side show, it was more something you put on in the background, not sat on couch and watched. We said you were free to change the channel, put a movie on, read a book, or whatever you want. And here you see me doing what I wanted. If I need to watch a movie or read a book, then command me to do so. Damn it. I'm not here to order you around. <sighs> I'm just trying to be nice. Christ. But hey, if that makes you happy, then by all means. It's about time for bed, though. You can use the bedroom down the hall. I'm sleeping on the sofa, so you have the room to yourself. Well, you have something else you want to say? I was certain you were going to try and sleep with me. Sleep with- Not a chance in hell! Are you out of your goddamn mind? I couldn't think of any other reason you would bring me here and offer me so much hospitality. Oh, for the love of God. I told you the onset. Outset, I was just providing you shelter until things blew over. I have no interest in goddamn children. Oh, uh, I see. 
She let a barely audible sigh of relief, not even bothering to object to my calling her a child. She did that mean she'd just been sitting here because she was just too scared to bring herself to do anything else? When that was the case, I could only imagine how rough it must have been waiting for me to get out of the shower. Maybe I could if I were a goddamn pushover. Don't put yourself in deliberately scary situations, idiot. Don't try to sleep in the park or casually follow strange men home or wear nothing but a goddamn shirt you know is going to do this to you. Act in your own interest for once instead of deliberately acting against them at every turn. You're the one who told me to come back with you in the first place, and there's nothing scary about this. Who knows what might have happened if you actually stayed in that park? It's not safe out there. Hell, it's a miracle you made it as long as you did without anything happening. Given how bad you smelled, you weren't out there for just a day or two. How long has it been, huh? When you run away from home? Stop shouting. I only stayed outside for about a week. What? Huh. God, you're one lucky girl. A whole week out there. Alone. Nothing did happen to you, right? No strange men tried to do anything? One man did attempt to touch me. Uh, what? And are, are you okay? I pulled up my sleeve, showed him my arm, and he ran off. Uh, you showed him your arm? What's that have to do with anything? Because I look like this. The girl quietly brought her hand up to the buttons on her shirt, undoing the top and then the next. Before I could get a word out, she turned around and dropped the shirt around her shoulders. Her back was covered in hideous markings. I felt like I was going to gag at the sight of it. The markings looked like something between burned scars, endlessly crisscrossing lacerations, and something might seem in someone's with a rare disease. I've never seen anything quite like it before. One look at this is enough to scare most people off, and there are none who would attempt to lay a hand on me, or worse. The man assumed to have some sort of horrible disease, and not wanting to catch it himself, he ran off very quickly. So, no, I'm not acting against my own interests. I know perfectly well that I was in no danger out there. See, you're scared too. What did I tell you? No. No, I wasn't scared. I just lost my voice. My chest was so tight I could hardly breathe. I felt almost like I had forgotten how to entirely. I was sinking deeper and deeper into a mire. What the hell is going on? What is this happening? Sure, the scars were grotesque and extremely unpleasant to look at, but this feeling was not rooted in either fear or disgust. It was... God, God, what was it? Those that scarred you failed to heal. You left her with them. Then proceeded to inflict even greater wounds upon her soul. You scarred her in a way she would never ever recover from. Oh. The next thing I realized was on my knees. My breathing rough and my hand clenched before my heart. What the hell was that? There was a voice condemning me. Reminding me of my mistakes, accompanied by a crushing torrent of emotions. I I apologize for showing you without warning. I didn't think they would sicken you so much. No, that's not it. Your scars didn't sicken me in the slightest. But knowing that I gave them to you. Well, what are you talking about? We first met yesterday. 
You couldn't possibly have caused these. They were not given to me by anyone, nor are they caused by disease. I've had them forever, my whole life. She had them forever? Are you... are you sure you're okay? Yeah, the terrible marks on my skin triggered a bad memory. Then I apologize. I'm very sorry. What are you apologizing for? That's not like you. Not like me? What are you talking about? We haven't even known each other a day. You don't know a single thing about me. <sighs> You're absolutely right. What the hell am I talking about? Something's gotten to me. Um, sorry. As you say, I couldn't have caused your scars. However, what is said still stands. They do not bother me. So stop being so self-depreciating about your body. Please, don't do it again. She, she fell silent for a few moments, as though in thought, then gave her a soft nod. To which I responded with an equally soft chuckle. The tightness of my chest remained entirely unrelieved, though. Had I honestly done nothing to cause those scars? A girl with scars like yours hasn't shown up in my dreams before. Has shown up in my dreams before, and every time I do something to her, I just can't remember what. Why bring this up now, though? If I told her we met in my dreams, she would think I'd gone mad. That would undoubtedly frighten her. You're assuming you're in no danger because of those scars, but you need to understand that there are people out there who only care if you're a girl. Nothing else matters to them. There's no such thing as too careful. You have a point, I suppose. I admit I was acting a bit rash and without concern for myself. I'll be a little more careful. If you could, that would put my mind at ease. But now you really should go to bed. You get thirsty during the night. Help you something anything in the fridge. And one, one last thing. You don't have to worry about any unwanted contact. I give you my word. I won't touch you without permission. Well, thank you. Well, good night. Good night. Uh, say... Yes? I thought you wanted me to go to bed. Well, yeah, just, uh... I won't do anything to hurt you. Okay? Um, you really are a bizarre man. I'm not concerned about you doing anything anymore. I can't quite put it into words, but you seem different from other men. Well, that's... Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Sleep well. The girl gave me this little nod, then trot off into the bedroom and out of sight. What on earth had possessed me to say that? Obviously, I wasn't going to do anything to her. But, but I still felt deep down that I had to tell her. Although I chicken out and not said it in the right way. I won't do anything to hurt you. Ever again. I was standing in a large room. It was more space than I knew what to do with. Even with the huge bed sitting at the far wall. Like the rest of the house, the room smelled of cigarettes. Normally I couldn't stand the smell, but it didn't bother me as much here, for whatever reason. I never stayed at anyone else's house before. 
and it wasn't like I'd been planning to change that anytime soon, despite the man's accusation that I just casually followed him home. I wanted to send him away when he told me to come with him. I wasn't stupid. He'd have to be crazy to follow a complete stranger, and an older man at that, a home. So why had I come with him? I couldn't explain it myself. Was it just me not caring about my own well-being? Was there really nothing else to it? Something told me that wasn't the case, that something else had pushed me to agreeing. It didn't make any sense. He was an angry, mean, bitter man. There was nothing at all likable about him. At most, he did seem like he would always be honest with me. Finally able to relax, I realized I was incredibly tired. I barely even had the energy left to think. It was probably time to sleep. It smells so nice. Is this still my character? Yes, Magana. But you choose what we're doing today, alright? Uh, you want me to sing? I don't mind. What are you laughing about? You didn't think I would agree? Okay, fine. I won't sing. Puppy dog eyes won't change my mind either. That's that. I'm not going to sing. Alone, that is. Yes, you're singing with me. Go find someone who has a lute and ask to borrow it. <laughs> you don't get a say in the matter. You did ask to borrow that, right? And got permission. None of the shenanigans he pulls at the festival. We need to remain on good terms with everyone if we're going to live here. Well, good. I'm glad you can manage that much. At some point, if we're going to do this again, you should purchase your own so you don't have to borrow one. It would certainly make things simpler, wouldn't it? Next time a merchant is in town, if they're selling a loot, buy it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. As long as it has strings capable of making music, that's adequate. And if it's out of tune, you can tune it. You can at least manage that, can't you? <laughs> That night, I had a strange dream. Fields of wheat, a loot, our homeland. I'd never seen a field like that before, at least not outside of photos. That said, it felt as though it had been forever since I'd slept soundly enough to dream. I almost wanted to go back to sleep, even though it was already morning. Maybe I would be able to see more of the dream if I did. It was bizarre. Something felt familiar about the field, though I was positive I had never been there in my life. It was an incredibly warm, happy dream, but somehow also deeply sad. 
And who was that in the dream with me? I got in dress, washed my face, brushed my teeth, and made breakfast. It was about time to head out to work. I assumed she would have been up by now, but the girls yet to emerge from my room. And what the hell am I waiting for her when leaving a note would more than suffice? Well, no, it would be fine for me, but less so for her waking up all alone in a stranger's house. I can't just go into the room and check on her either. But she's in there changing. Grr. Why am I wasting time worrying about this at all? This is my apartment, and she's in my room. I have every right to go in there. She has a problem with it. Well, it's, it's her fault for sleeping so damn long. All right, time to drag her ass out of bed. Hey, it's me. I'm coming in, but not for any uncouth reasons. You hear me? It's just breakfast is going to get cold and gross if... Ugh! What are you doing standing in front of my door? Christ! Give me a little warning, child. What are you, a ghost? Make a damn peep. Perhaps you need your eyes checked. As you can see, I have two very real legs. Th that you do, yes. Well, uh... Anyway, I thought you would be more of an early riser. Um, uh... I'm not trying to get in your case or anything. I'm just glad you seem to have slept well. Was the bed comfortable? It was... strange. Strange? In what sense? It smelled like a wet dog. Wh what Hold on. I know I washed those sheets. Or are you simply implying that I stink? <laughs> Consider it payback for last night. They really got her in her skin, huh? I do think it's about a smile on her just now, though. Maybe I'm imagining it. But she's a bit more affable than last night. May I ask why you're staring at me? No reason. Breakfast is ready, and I have to head to work soon. But it's Saturday. Are you bad at your job? No, stupid. The opposite. I do three times as much work as everyone else because they're all incompetent. Is that so? At school, you have to do extra work if you do poorly. So I assumed you were the incompetent one. I see that mouth of yours doesn't need any time to warm up in the morning. Now, I have to be going. You can, uh, well, do whatever you want. You're free to leave your wife, or stay here. I assumed you were going to chase me out. And deal with you lurking around the park again? No, thank you. So am I supposed to say, have a nice day now, or something? Uh, I mean, you could if you wanted to. I'm not going to make you do anything, though. Well, in that case, I will send you off with a little something. Never come back. You little... What the hell's your problem? I get the whole apartment to myself if you don't come back. <laughs> Where do you find room for all that cheek in such a tiny body? I swear, you somehow got even worse than last night. Christ so muddy. Okay, I'm going to work. Farewell. It was a bright and sunny morning. Then I traced the bleak rain from the night before. I hadn't paid much attention to the outside in recent months. It was almost shockingly nice out today. A sully dewy morning breeze tickled my cheeks. The leaves on the trees along the road were so intensely green, they seemed otherworldly. Going straight to the office would make this into just another day, so I took a seat on a set of stairs on the way to the bus stop. I had a smoke. Watching the silver strands dance up into the blue sky, my mind once again drifted to the girl. I said she could stay if she wanted to, but how long could I really keep her in my care? If I wanted to do what was best for her, well, 
there were organizations much better to deal, equipped to deal with that situation than a single man. I shouldn't be letting her get comfortable. When I took her in, I assumed her reason for running away was something trivial like a a spat with her parents. Like, considering how utterly clueless she seemed about even the simplest things last night, I was beginning to suspect her situation was more complicated than I had first imagined. Was hers a broken home? Or was there something even worse going on? Unless I wanted to make, risk making things worse, I couldn't offer her any advice without more information. So the smart thing to do was to sit back and see how things played out. It wouldn't be fun for me either. If her parents find out about this, I could very well end up in jail. Which meant it really wasn't all that smart after all, huh? I had to wonder. Would I be doing the same for anyone? Not just her? Probably not, no. I couldn't say why, but I suspected the only reason I was bothering at all was because of who she was. I wanted to do what I could to help her. It made no sense either. I couldn't make a damn cent of helping her. She was just a noxious child, not even fit for work. You know, I never did get her name, did I? Slipping out of thought, I realized I was at the end of my third cigarette. So much for a smoke. The sky was still immensely clear. They are sweet and fresh, and the morning beautiful. So it suddenly feels like a giant waste of time. Is work really so important that I had to drag myself out on a day like this nice? Ah, screw it, I'm taking a day off. I turned around, made my way back home, and found a girl in the living room. Evidently startled by the sound of the door opening. She hid herself behind a collar and was peeking out at me. She looked so much like a cat on high alert that I couldn't hold back a chuckle. Seeing it was me at the door, the girl stepped out of the shadows and gave me a fierce glare. Is your job something you can complete in less than an hour? I'm so damn good I can finish a full day's work in only 30 minutes. Oh, jokes aside, it's not to go in today. And you can just decide not to go on a whim like that? Hmm. I'm really going back to a normal work week after sacrificing weekends for the pay and advancement opportunities. Of course, now it's just assumed I'll always be there, which means... It's going to be hell when I do go back in. And what are you planning to do with this extra time you now have? Well, uh, hmm, I don't know. Do you want to go for a walk? Together? So you don't get the wrong idea. I did not take the day off because I was worried about you. I thought it would be a waste to go into work on such a nice day. I'm only inviting you because you happen to be here on the day that I happen to take off. I'll be going shopping while I'm out as well. That's not good for you to stay holed up inside all day. It's important to get a little sun sometimes. Especially you, because you look like a damn ghost. Do you get out at all? I got enough sun for a lifetime while I was staying in the park. And I'm naturally pale. That's all there is to it. You want to go for a walk. By all means, go for a walk. Can't say I didn't expect that. Alright then, I'll be back in a bit. I never said I wouldn't come with you. Huh? You say something? I said you were free to go, but I never said it had to be alone. You said you were going shopping, right? I I I'll help carry the bags. Why are you giving me that look? Well, no reason. Just admiring how hard you're trying to avoid saying you want to go. You'll help carry the bags, will you? How fascinating. Oh, please. You're one to talk about trying too hard. so you don't get the wrong idea. I'm merely helping as thanks for yesterday. I have absolutely no interest in going on the walk with you. Yeah, yeah, you're not interested, I hear ya. So let's get going then, shall we? 
Ugh. I should have just let you go alone. I couldn't remember the last time I walked with someone first. Something other than work. My natural walking speed was a good deal faster than hers. So if I weren't, wasn't careful, I was likely to end up leaving her behind. I had to make an effort to reduce my pace to match hers, which turned out to be much more difficult than I would have imagined. But curiously, it wasn't an aggregating kind of difficulty. It was an entirely new experience, kind of enjoyable for it. Christ, my whole world seemed to be flipped on its head. You know, I never did get a chance to ask. Do you live in Paris too? No, a little south of here. Huh, that narrows it down to... <laughs> Whatever, not gonna pry. So I take it you're not terribly familiar with Paris then? In which case, I can show you around some while we walk. Despite her insistence she was only going to help me with my shopping, the girl made no objections to the detour. First, I took her to the Champs Elysees, one of the 12 avenues that meet the Arc de Triomphe, perhaps the most recognizable monument in all of Paris. The Arc, constructed in a neoclassical style, sits at the center of the place, say, Charles de Gaulle, formerly known as the Place de Autole. As we approach the Arc, its full proper name, the Arc de Triomphe de Autole, I decided to tell her a bit about its history. The monument was commissioned by Napoleon to commemorate his victory in the Battle of Austerlitz, which took place not far from the town now known as Sakov u in the Czech Republic. However, its construction was a rather troubled process and he did not end up living long enough to see it completed. After a few minutes, I realized I was just writing off unimportant trivia and probably boring the girl to death. But much to my surprise, she was listening quite intently. She seemed I guess all along, to have actually been enjoying our sudden sightseeing tour. But when I asked if she wanted to climb the Ark, she gave me a disappointing, disapproving glare and muttered, I prefer quiet places. That made things quite difficult, as Paris was always teeming with tourists. Her options were to either head somewhere in the outskirts of the city, or find a small park tucked away somewhere tourists were unlikely to stumble on. Maybe that was why she had chosen a park to stay in. So instead of going anywhere in particular, we just wandered around the city a bit, stopped by to look at a few of the churches we passed. Jesus, you don't talk at all, do you, child? Never in my life have I seen a girl look so damn forlorn while sightseeing in Paris. If you want a conversation partner, then find someone else to invite on your walks. Besides, it's not like... You say anything of value either. You're just griping all the time. That was not a gripe. It was a casual observation. Ah, yes. Very casual indeed. So where are we going next? Hmm. Is there anything you want to see? I might be willing to consider it if you ask nicely. There you go again. Always so insufferably haughty. I don't even know what there is to see, honestly. As long as it's somewhere quiet, I don't care where we go. You keep saying that, but I don't think there's any such thing as a quiet tourist attraction. Even historical monuments are usually swarmed with dumb teens making stupid faces into their phone cameras. You act like that's the only option, but I never said I wanted to go sightseeing. Then what do you want to do? Doesn't have to do and be anything specific, just give me something to work with. Nothing, really. This whole thing has been you dragging me around the city, so you decide what you want to do. Oh, for God's sake. You could try showing a little appreciation. I'm doing all this for you, you realize? Here I am, using my day out to show you around. You look like you're at a goddamn funeral. You act like you're... Enjoying it for one minute? Why should I have to act like I'm enjoying myself when I never once asked you to drag me out to a bunch of tourist traps? That was all you. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was all me. I dragged you out here with no consideration for you. I'm very sorry. There, you happy? Christ, don't give me that look. I didn't take you out to, to get mad at you. I just want to do something that might be fun for you. Uh, never mind. Forget I said anything. Yeesh. Let's call it a day and head home already. God, I don't know what got into me. But I would never do this normally. What? You have something you want to say? Go right ahead. Bitch me out as much as you want. Oh no, not at all. I'm just... well... <laughs> I didn't expect you starting to finish your sentence for you. C come on, don't laugh. I didn't do it on purpose. And normally I'm more careful about... Yeah, yeah, I hear you. We let yourself go so long without eating. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was already midday. Of course, of course you're not going to be able to come out with something you... Somewhere you want to go on an empty stomach. Okay, just give me a minute. I'll get us a reservation at a nice Italian restaurant in. Please. It doesn't have to be anything fancy like that. Really. An Italian restaurant is no fancy than anywhere else it could take you. What? Are you worried about how much it will cost? You're a kid. Leave the money for concerns to the adults. I am not a kid. Right, right. You're in t your 20s. I quickly have forgot. Then as an adult woman, you should know that it's your place to let the man pay for your meal. You hear me? Aren't you just saying we're going to head back home, though? That was the plan until your stomach ejected. If you're that hungry, we should go eat now rather than wait for you to starve in the time it takes to go shopping, get home, and make something. I'm not going to starve. Ugh, fine. Alright, I'll go wherever. Can't decide what to do, can't decide how to act. You're rather indecisive, aren't you? Can we please go somewhere small at least? I really don't do well in places with lots of people. Is that so? You certainly are a strange child. Well, I don't mind either way, but what are the options for smaller establishments even? Oh, wait. What I was about to say, we wouldn't find something without a bit of looking. I caught sight of a sign, a little alleyway. It was a cafe, so far out of the way as to be nigh unnoticeable. Perhaps they simply couldn't secure a better location. Paris was a war ground, after all. It was going to be near impossible for them to draw in customers. And, for that reason, exactly the kind of place the girl was looking for. After asking if she wanted to check it out, we turned into the quiet alleyway. On the sign outside the cafe was a handwritten lunch menu. Nothing about it drew the eye at all. I wonder if they even wanted to attract customers. Through the window, I could see a single waitress sitting with her elbow on the counter, her chin resting on her hand. The lighting was poor and the decor several decades outdated. Not in a classy and vintage way, but poor and in our anachronistic taste. Above all, it was barren at lunch on a weekend, when it should be at its busiest. Frankly, on my own, would never have given this place a second look. Clearly, something must have been wrong for it, for no one to be there. Perhaps the food was dreadful in addition to the pool aesthetic sense. I made a coffee with undrinkable sludge. I was getting ready to turn around and look for somewhere else when... Let's eat here. It's quiet and there's nobody around. And then she marched straight into the cafe, paying me no heed. Maria, I think. Oh. Crap. Lenny, you there?
Lenny Gray. She may have stepped away for a moment, I guess. Sorry about that. It's fine. It's fine. I was talking and then I didn't realize it was unplugged. Happens. Happens. All right, what what line am I at? Afternoon? Yes. Yes. All right. Afternoon. What the? What the? The waitress sounded like she would rather be anywhere but here. Hardly an attitude befitting someone of the food service industry. There's no time to turn back. Find a place that serves food suitable for human consumption. The hell, man? Customer or not, you can't just walk in and trash the place like, wait, holy shit! You're the dick from yesterday! The rich trust stepped out from behind the counter, slack-jawed. I imagine I was making a similarly ridiculous face. It was the woman I shared drinks with last night. I never would have imagined this is where you worked. Talk about one hell of a coincidence. I told you we'd cross paths again, but I didn't think it'd be this soon. But wait, didn't you say you had work today? Ah, you got shit canned. Poor thing. I did not. I simply took the day off. I'm not some incompetent replaceable drone. They can't just shit can me like everyone else. The kind of dude who thinks he's irreplaceable is always the most replaceable. Watch your back, you never know when they could be coming for you. Stamned woman. Maria let a little cackle then turned her gaze towards the girl. Her eyes were slightly wider than usual, evidently surprised and knew the woman. Who's she? You don't look like siblings, so... cousin? Niece, maybe? Well, we're not exactly family, but... I first met two days ago, and yesterday he took me home with him. You little... Are you trying to make me sound like... Now Marie's looking at me like I'm human garbage. <laughs> Officer! This man kidnapped a little girl! Ah, oh, god <sighs> damn it! Stop yelling, you imbecile! And that's how I end up temporarily taking in her into my custody. Neither a kidnapper nor a pedophile. Understood? <laughs> I get the gist, even if I don't quite follow your reasoning. Now the girl sat at the table by the window, then brought Maria to the back of the cafe, explain how I end up in this situation. When I stood visibly skeptical, she didn't look like she was going to call the police as soon as I turned my back anymore. I now knew what it felt like to have my light be hanging by the thread. Christ, what did I do to deserve this? She's a runaway though. Shouldn't you have just called the police and let them deal with her? Actually, you know what? Forget that. I'm sure you went that down. I'm sure you went down that path plenty on your own. Just try to get out before things get hairier for you. That's the idea. In a few days, I'll either make her go back home or hand off to the authorities. Good plan. You're not stupid, I don't think. So it figures you'd have something like that worked out. Assuming it does work out, that is. I don't see me quite myself when it comes to the girl. I'd never do any of this under any other circumstances. That said, do be nice to the girl while you've got her around. She didn't run away because her life was great. Are you implying I'm treating her unkindly? I'd be surprised if that wasn't the case. I mean, you're a short fused and get bitchy and start yelling about the most trivial things. Don't try to act like you know me. She's exactly right, though. I'm aware of how bad about that I can be. Be nice to the girl. 
Hey, have we had this conversation before? What? The first time we spoke was yesterday. Of course we haven't. Yeah, right. You're right. Sorry. I... Well, you get back out there. Can't keep the princess waiting too long. Christ. Princess, she was anything but. Were you able to sort things out with her? Yes, I was trying to get you a happy meal. With some difficulty, yes. I'd rather you didn't deliberately invite misunderstandings like that. What's to misunderstand? Every word of it was the truth. Context, girl. Context. Why she have called the police on me? Well, um, that would be quite unfortunate for you. I swear to God, child. After everything I've done for you, you can't even scrunch together a scrap of consideration or gratitude. I was just warned about being nice to her. It's even been five minutes and I already snapped. <sighs> anyway, um, what do you want to eat? You can ask for anything at all. What do you want? Oh, then how about a sandwich? You don't want anything more? Some cake, a drink? Don't ask as much as you want, seriously. What? Okay, now you're creeping me out. Why the sudden friendly act? What are you scheming? I'm not scheming anything. This is why I don't try to be nice. Man, for an Italian, you sure are worthless when it comes to women. You sure actually got the right race here? Positive, damn it. Whatever. I don't expect anything good out of this hole in the wall. So just bring a few plates of whatever the hell you feel like. That really how you want to talk to the girl who's going to be making your food? Prove me wrong. A restaurant that has food worth its salt also goes through an effort of looking the part. That's just how it is. Now look at this place. The furnishings don't match. There's no consistency. No sort of aesthetic sense. Not attracting customers means no revenue. No revenue means no money with which to purchase quality ingredients. A straight path to failure. Uh, shut up already! I'm tired of all your bitching! There's nothing I can do about it, okay? The owner is this old fart who refuses to replace anything because it all has sentimental value to him. I'm not the one who's decorated. Uh, I see, so the cafe is just an elderly man's pastime. That explains it. To some degree, at least. I'm surprised he would choose to work at a place like this, though. Hey. He pays me and he treats me well. The place may look like crap, but it's a living. Only real issues are I might die from boredom and the place could shut down on me any day. Not because we're not getting customers, but the owner's getting up there in age, so... But enough about me. As you requested, I'll get you a plate of whatever and prepare something absolutely exquisite for the girl. Back in a few. It's called discrimination, you do realize. You're quite close. Have you two known each other very long? Nope. Didn't know she existed until yesterday. She said I bummed her once before, but I don't remember her at all. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, why this stink guy? What, do you think I'm a player or something? Sure, I both drank with her and brought you home last night, which does make me look very good on its own. But yesterday was nothing but one ex exceptional circumstance after the other. I never hit off with someone like that after only one day. God damn it, why do I make excuses for myself to this girl? I was merely shocked to discover you didn't meet a friend after only one day. I didn't realize you were capable of being social. Or making friends at all, even. That's rich coming from you. Besides, I had plenty of friends when I was living in Italy. My social life just took a hit after moving here. 
then I'm happy for you. She seems like a nice girl. Hmm. Well, I'll let you agree with your assessment. She's try making friends with her too. No her could come in handy, you know, if something ever comes up. You have a point. I'll consider it. Maybe because she's a girl too? But she's a lot more receptive of Maria than me. You have more luck getting through her to her using Maria instead of having her to fight her tooth and nail over everything. She'd probably be willing to open up more to her as well. What you doing? Talking about me, aren't you? Gah, don't sneak up on me like that. But that was fast. Is the food ready? I'm just bringing you your drinks. Here you are, some instant coffee. And for you, sweet little thing, I've made some herbal tea with the highest quality chamomile leaves we have. Try to be a little bit more subtle with your favoritism. Herbal tea with chamomile? Oh, you not a fan? Yeah, chamomile can be a bit of an acquired taste. Want me to grab you something else? No, I'll have this. I'm rather fond of it, in fact. You think? Not that I've had chamomile tea before, it just kind of reminds me of days long past. Huh? It reminds you of something you've never done before? I think that's called deja vu, you silly girl. Anyway, sounds good to me. I'll throw some cookies in too so you're not just sipping tea. We got plenty, so feel free to give me a shout if you want more. Same goes for you if you want anything else, alright? Don't worry about coming off as rude or greedy. That's what being a kid's all about. Hmm. You should know the girl hates being called a kid. I hope you enjoyed dealing with her death glare and insisting that she's actually an adult. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate your generosity. <laughs> what a sweet girl! I can't believe you're the same girl Jacopo was over here whining me about. He's clearly broken into the brain. What the hell? What the hell? She's never this well behaved when it's just me. Alright. Well, I got some food to make. Should be out pretty quick, but I'll warn you in advance. Don't expect anything super fancy from a teensy little cafe. Very cheerful and energetic woman. She's not energetic. She's just loud. I thought you didn't like people like her anyway. Usually they make me uncomfortable, but hers is a pleasant energy. What I'll call it. I guess I'm going to have to consider asking for Maria for help after all. Hey. Yes? She didn't have to force herself to stay with me. She could always put herself under Maria's care instead. It would probably be less awkward for her there too. Could even propose it to her myself if she didn't, if she didn't feel comfortable. I knew what I should say to her but the worst wouldn't come out. The idea of leaving her in someone else's care was repulsive to me on a deeply based level. I had no idea why. Where the hell were these feelings coming from? I barely even knew the damn girl. Why should I care so much? It didn't matter who looked back to her. In fact, she would be better off with someone else. Yet, I felt as though if I let go of her and trusted her to someone else, then we would never be this close ever again. Wait, we would never be this close ever again? It made it sound like I wasn't caring for her because she needed it but instead using her problems as a way to prop myself up. Some sick search for self-satisfaction. What is it? 
you're going to say something, and then... Oh, right. Sorry, I was thinking about something I lost my train of thought. It probably wasn't important anyway. The look on your face suggested otherwise, but okay. Forget about it. Honestly, it was nothing. Now, what I really like to talk about... Is you. I think it's about time you fill me in on some details. What were you doing in that park? Where do you really live and why did you run away? Nothing at all? Well, I'm not gonna push, but... What's the point? What will knowing get you? It's not about getting anything. It's just I can't offer you advice or help you fix anything if I don't know what the problem is. I didn't leave looking for advice. Nor do I want you to try to fix anything. Huh. Well, that's about the response I expected. Okay then, I promise I'll keep my nose out of your business. So, tell me about yourself. Why? What point is there to you knowing anything about me? Because... Because obviously by getting to know you, I can get closer to you. There doesn't need to be any more point than that. I want to know more about you. Simple as that. Oh Christ, just think about it makes me want to throw up. Who even talks like that? I decided she fell silent and could bring myself to press any further. So instead I was going to tell her to forget it. That she didn't have to say anything if she didn't want to. When she muttered a single word almost under her breath. Morgana. Huh. I didn't catch that. My name... It's Morgana. I hadn't told you yet, had I? Oh, wow. So your name's Morgana, huh? That's a good strong name. Sounds Centurion too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. My mother is French. And I've lived in France all my life. However... She hesitated. I urged her on with a look. After a few moments, she reluctantly continued. My father's never been in my life. Not as far back as my memory could go, at least. So there's a chance he may be, but I don't know. I see. Do you ever want to meet your father? I'm not sure. He's essentially a stranger, so I have no real emotional attachment to him. In fact, I... N never mind. She fell silent once again, leaving the f in fact hanging in the air. I gave her another I see and then pressed the subject any further. I did, however, feel like I'd gotten a glimpse into where their isolation came from. Well, this small damn world, huh? You made fun of me for not being a Titan stereotype, but you don't exactly fit this part either, do you? I'll be quiet. I know I don't. Why do you seem so happy about it, though? It's not that, just realizing we may have walked the same paths, seen the same views. I feel a little sense of kinship. I thought you didn't like Italy. You were complaining about how there's nothing there. Huh? Oh, you, you got a good memory. It's true that I, I don't like dealing with family stuff back home. That's all a huge pain to navigate. But the scenery can be quite nice. I know I said there's nothing there, but I do still fondly remember the beautiful nature on that island. Ocean as far as the eyes can see. I really like that. And there is this golden wheat field, though I have no idea what it was anymore. Or wait, maybe the field was just in my dreams and not anywhere back home. Oh, forget it. The point is there's some gorgeous scenery there. That sounds nice. I'd like to see it for myself someday. Maybe. You can. It's only a three hour flight from here. The only limits to where you can go these days is your imagination. Hell, I could take you there myself if you want. Show you the world. You would take me? Uh, 
Um, try not to overthink that. I just mean, I just imagine your understanding of the world is very limited. Stepping out beyond your own sphere is a valuable life experience, and something I think might be good to expose you to. Um, did I upset her? Oh, so you want to help me experience new things. Well, I suppose I can look into it. What is there to look into? I said there's still much more receptive than she would have been yesterday, so we're making progress. I think I even caught her smiling a little. She looks so much better with a smile on her face. I want to get a bit of a look at that one that lasts more than a split second sometime. Why are you staring at me? Is there something on my face? No, you just... You also look so dour. I was thinking about how it would be nice if you smile a little more. Uh, it, uh, you know, you. You wouldn't be so unpleasant to look at. What? I can't believe you, you insensitive brute. My god, why am I so incapable of just saying what I'm thinking? A little bit later, Marie returned with two sandwiches. The one she sent her from McGon was at least two times too large for a light afternoon meal. McGon is staying at a triumphant stack of meats and cheeses and vegetables. I wasn't sure what to do with it. Meanwhile, all I ever see was a simple panino containing nothing but a few slices of ham and cheese. I considered filing a complaint, but McGonna ended up giving me that she couldn't eat her uh, all of hers, at which point I stopped caring enough to feel slighted. The cafe remained empty all through lunch. On some level, it was kind of a shame because the food wasn't bad, but it also meant we could talk with Maria since she didn't have anyone to wait on. As the dining establishment was undisputably a failure, but couldn't have been a more perfect location for us. Time seemed to have passed faster than it should have been as the two of us talked. Magana didn't speak much, but she never once seemed bored, sometimes even giving a slight a little laugh at something Maria said. And the next thing I realized, the sunlight shining through the window had turned orange. Never before I spent so much time in a cafe. Usually, I only stayed long enough to inhale some caffeine or calories. The very idea of relaxing seemed like a negligent misuse of time to me. But this? This was probably how you were supposed to patronize these sort of establishments. So, relaxed and refreshed, we decided it was time to head home. As we got up to leave, Maria gave me a disappointed pout and said, Come on! You don't have to go. Come back again soon, okay? I guarantee there won't be anyone else here. She gave us a little wave and then we headed out. I hope business was to pick up a bit, if only because it seemed like Maria was going to die from boredom before long. With that, our sightseeing tour came to an end. We went to take care of our original goal, shopping. I took Morgan to a moderately large supermarket near my apartment, and she was astounded by the wide array of products sold. Apparently she'd never been in one before, which only added to my concern about what kind of life she led. Though maybe she just lived somewhere really rural that didn't have big stores and there wasn't anything more to it. I asked Magona what she wanted for dinner. All she gave me was a non-committal anything. Then I asked if she had any favorite foods, to which she responded with, I'll eat anything. It was easy to cook for someone if they gave you something to work with. Evidently, though, she wasn't just being shy and generally had no wants or preferences. After that, how thin she was and how little she seemed to eat, I began to wonder if she ever even had a proper home-cooked meal. She obviously wasn't a dieting type either. In fact, when Maria had brought her that oversized sandwich, she tried to force herself to finish it. She got the impression of a nun who lived her entire life cut off from earthly pleasures, or perhaps a saint forbidden from indulging in worldly desires. 
I hope that one day I'll be able to hear her express some kind of desire. Be it something she wanted, some food she craved, or some activity she was interested in. When we were done at the market, we went to the bookstore to buy some movies. However, some most of what they had on the shelves was of top bestsellers variety. I was interested in mass marketed fluff myself and would have preferred something literary or artistic or even educational like a documentary. But I knew I was going to find that in the common neighborhood's bookstore. Being mass market didn't automatically make a bad film bad, mind you. You acquired great talent to write and direct something capable of resonating with so many people. Lots of careful consideration that go into every single element of the production to ensure it's enjoyable and understandable to everyone who saw it. It wasn't something just anyone could pick up and do. Now, that wasn't to say I didn't think Morgana could understand more challenging films. In fact, she seemed like the kind of person who wouldn't enjoy pop culture. But I also felt like what she needed right now is some time to just turn off and enjoy some mindless entertainment. You watch one movie before dinner, a classic animated film, and another after. I love action comedy. You never think I would watch my own. Being with the funny parts, but God didn't so much as smirk. After a while, I began to feel like an idiot laughing all by myself. So when it was over, I asked her if she didn't like the movie and... No, I enjoyed it. I was impressed by the actor's selflessness and their attempts to make the audience laugh. The world is a better place thanks to their great sacrifices. Her response was utterly baffling. You watch movies for that. Additionally, your commentary throughout the film about the actor's performances, the motives used in the director's past works, was somewhat irritating to be honest. Well, I'm sorry, jeez. I won't talk during a movie again. You can be sure of that. It was rather annoying, but also, it's kind of fun to learn things I don't know. I'm ignorant about everything, so I don't know what's out there, what's fun, what things, which things people have made and done. So, teach me. You know these sorts of things, don't you? Then you can share some of that knowledge with me. McGonagall was staying at my apartment tonight as well, once again using one of my shirts as oversized loungewear. When I mentioned regretting not to buy her clothes of her own, she said, I don't mind this shirt. It's perfectly functional. It would be a waste of money to buy something new. A cup of soda's loungewear wasn't going to set I wasn't going to break the bank, but I quickly found myself relenting. That was even bothered was proof of how much of a disgrace I was. Besides, you promised you wouldn't touch me without permission. So even if it isn't a perfect fit, I have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Christ, this girl is a little devilish. If I truly am, then I have a father somewhere. One night, I overheard my mother muttering about something. At the time, I assumed it was just a dream, but... If what she said was true, my father was a mere vagrant. A man whose face I never once saw, whose name I never heard. Frankly, I'm not sure. I wouldn't know what to say even if I did. He might not even know I exist. It didn't sound like he had any interest in staying with my mother, which does not speak particularly well of his character. If he had chosen to stay instead of abandoning her, then she wouldn't have had to lie about having a virgin birth. Maybe we could have 
even been a normal family, and the entire course of my life could have been different. Why is that your first reaction? You're not going to cut him down and give him a piece of your mind? No. Any form of violence is forbidden. And even if it's for my sake, too many people have been hurt already. Which isn't to say don't understand what you meant when you said the world would trample all over you if you didn't have the strength to fight back. As children, we are both helpless to fight back against a cruel world. But I stand by what I said. No more. I once believed you to be a weak man, but I've realized I was mistaken. Now I know you have more than enough strength, enough to take the lives of countless men. Some part of me always knew, but that's all the more reason. I don't want you to hurt anyone else ever again, to take any more lives. I will have no choice but to deem you utterly irredeemable if you break that promise. Understood? What? No, that doesn't mean I think you presently have redeeming qualities. Have you lost your mind? Honestly, this is not the time for silly, do you like me games? Don't tell me you're waiting for an answer, because you're never getting one. What? Fine, if you want to know what I think so badly. No, I don't much care for you. <laughs> Flat dream again. Fields of wheat stretching out like an ocean. Talk about my unseen father. I had almost the same thing come up this afternoon. Could it be a coincidence? In the dream, there was someone standing before me, a silhouette of a man, his face imperceptible. But whoever it was, they meant a lot to me. If only I could see them again. We're going to spend the following day in my apartment as well. It was a sunny Sunday, we started at Willow Walk. Took a brief detour to the cafe Maria worked at. Did some light shopping. They went home and watched a movie. Concerned she might get bored doing all the same things again, I had to maybe play some video games. I wasn't much of a gamer myself though. I mostly used the console to watch movies. So I brought the digital version of some racing game we had at it. We were both absolutely terrible, which helped keep things fun and not overly competitive. In our final race, regardless car spun out, she ended up driving backwards to the course, causing me to laugh so hard I dropped my controller. After that, she refused, refused to play with me anymore, even talked to me for a good while. Monday morning, I had to go to work. It was the first time in my life that I had ever felt like an obligation, a burden. My and I spent a good 90% of our time arguing about something or other, but on some level, it seemed like I actually come to enjoy those conversations. And having to leave that behind for work only made me realize I wasn't working because I enjoyed it, but because I convinced myself it was all I could do. It was a way to ensure no one would be able to claim I hadn't accomplished anything when I returned to Sicily. So no one could look down on me. So no one could challenge me. I always believed that money and power were all one needed to get whatever they wanted in life. I forfeited any semblance of a personal life to achieve that. Even now, I wasn't entirely convinced that belief was wrong either. What things did modern society place the most value in? After all, personal assets and social standing. 
The more time I spent with Morgana, though, the more these pillars of my life wavered. She didn't care for fancy restaurants and was more than happy to eat some cheap meal that only took 10 minutes to throw together. She found beauty in the ordinary, not just things designed to appear beautiful. Filtered through her eyes, the world seemed gentler than the one I knew. Which was especially curious how she herself were anything but gentle, mercilessly sharp tongue and aggressively aloof. Yet because of her, the wind on my cheeks feel warmer now. I put my heart at ease in a way that I couldn't help but think. I felt this way before, long, long ago. That it wasn't arbitrary. That there was an explanation for the peace she, she provided me. I stopped doing regular overtime at work. Right before I read and went off as unreliable and useless. This would be best to simply handle everything myself. I started delegating some of that work back to my subordinates. And was shocked at the sudden change in my demeanor. And many were upset at the reduced efficiency that resulted from it. But it was their work to begin with, so they had no grounds to complain. People were going to be talking about me behind my back. That much was inevitable, inevitable when their workload increased. Even more so in considering I was already disliked for how often I yelled at and chewed people out. I didn't have time to bother myself with other people's opinions. Before, I would have been worried what would affect my prospects of promotion. But now, I wasn't especially concerned. I was doing what I needed to do and not a single thing more. My priority now was getting home as quickly as possible. So I could teach Morgana more about the world. And then, before I realized it, Two weeks have passed since I took her, her in on that rainy night. Still, she was staying at my apartment. Sometimes I ask her with a sigh, When are you planning to go home already? To which she responded, puffing her cheeks, You're free to kick me out whenever you want. Except I couldn't, which is why we were in this situation in the first place. Did she challenge me knowing I wouldn't call her a bluff? That I didn't exactly want to throw her out anymore? For the past couple of weeks, I brought more books and movies than I could count so she could keep herself occupied while I was at work. I shock at you myself, I've given her a spare key as well. Something was clearly loose in my head. Doing things for her made me feel good though. And as insane as I rationally knew I was, I couldn't fight how it made me feel. Over and over and over again, I argued with myself, but never once did good sense win out. I must confess, I have grown quite fond of this new life. It was a Thursday, a little over two weeks since I met Morgana. The first day I managed to do was force an umbrella onto her. I couldn't imagine from that encounter that we'd effectively be living together soon after. Not enough time had passed to really reminisce about how far we'd come, but nevertheless, the change was undeniable. Damn it, how's it already half past eight? So much for normal overtime. It's hard to believe 8.30 feels late to me now. She's probably already eaten by now. Surely she's not waiting for me. Hey, I'm home. Morgana. Hello, Morgana. Are you there? I couldn't find her anywhere in the apartment. She wasn't asleep and she wasn't in the shower either. She was just gone as if the last two weeks had been all a dream. We weren't family, nor were we really living together, but I got so used to having someone there to snark at me when I got home that I felt off to be greeted by silence. My first thought was that something had happened to her. She was in hurt or in danger, but the apartment was just how I left it. The door was still locked, and there was no sign of anyone breaking in. She had left her own volition, locking the door behind her. Could she have gotten into trouble somewhere else then? Ah, oh, for God's sake. I got no way of getting in touch with her, either. 
I should have brought her a phone and a spare in, in case she lost it. Did I go looking for her? Call the police, maybe? Slow down. I was acting like she needed to be here when I got back. After how many times I told her to get out. I never meant it as anything more than banter, but how is she supposed to know my intentions? Would it make more sense for her to just to have just gone home? As opposed to something actually happening to her? That was, I was the only one enjoying our time together and she had finally gotten tired of me for good? I mean, thinking back, she clearly always seemed annoyed. Constantly complaining, never smiling. Telling me she even knows how many times I should burn in hell. What if I misread her and she wasn't joking? And every day here was piling on more and more stress. As much as I had continued since she was a child... It wasn't like she was primary school or middle school age. She was old enough to think and make decisions for herself. In fact, judging from the short time we've been together, she was very mature for her age. So she wasn't going to be completely helpless if something did happen to her. So I guess that's that. She's through with me then. Huh. Wish she would have at least said goodbye. I guess to her, we were just strangers, so... I wasn't so much angry as I felt bummed. I tossed the meter by over lunch onto the counter, then collapsed into the couch. She'd always sit right here, too, in a spot. She was small and barely took up any space, but the hole left in her absence felt larger than life. The room was uncomfortably quiet now. It felt like the temperature had dropped several degrees as well. Ah, this is just a return to status quo. There's nothing I'd have said about you, fool. I guess I'll make myself dinner then. I stood motionless in the kitchen. I needed to scrounge together the motivation to make anything. I wasn't cooking for anyone else, so it didn't have to be anything fancy. Just saw I can with spaghetti sauce and tossed it over some pasta. It's easy. Huh? Was that the door? Oh, hello. I thought you might be a bit longer tonight. Making dinner for yourself, I see. She stood before me with a grocery bag in her hands. I stood before her, utterly stupefied. She frowned in that old, so, so familiar frown. She didn't have to say a word, I could still hear her mocking me clear as day. I felt like all the women sucked out of me, and with it, the ability to lie. Yeah, I, uh, th I thought you'd gone home, so I... Yes, I did just come home. You weren't on the same page. So you seem to think that by home I meant... Oh. I finally hit her. And without even missing a beat, she called my apartment her home. <laughs> what? what are you laughing about? It was just a slip of the tongue, okay? You don't need to make such a big deal out of it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It wasn't on purpose. <laughs> but you're still laughing. I don't understand you at all. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I, I don't want to see myself one gosh dang bit either. Gosh dang? Yeah. God damn it. Now it's my turn for a slip of the tongue. I haven't talked like that in years. Uh, um, just uh, pretend I didn't say that. You didn't hear anything. Okay? I don't. I think I prefer that to the alternative. I mean, well, I don't know why you feel the need to force yourself to blasphemy me so often, and you won't be much more approachable if you lightened up your language some. I'd appreciate if you did it so around me, at least. If, uh, if I feel the need, uh, maybe. She smiled, a rare occurrence. 
but I couldn't bring myself to look her in the eyes. I absolutely wanted to take in every second of it though. God, I was acting like a damn child. It was getting to be impossible to deny what was going on. I was a 26 year old man, she's a good decade younger, maybe. It was wrong on so many levels to have these feelings about her. But I... I was in transfer with Morgana. You're allowed to sleep in your own bed, you know. I was getting ready to head to the living room for bed when Morgana interrupted me. Did this girl understand the meaning of her words? She was telling me I could sleep <clears throat> in the same bed as her. You can't be getting much rest sleeping on the couch every night. And it's not like I'm going to be a distraction, am I? Th that's not the issue. It's, it's wrong for us to sleep in the same bed. There's no excuse. I don't follow your logic. It's wrong, so it's wrong. That's all there, that's all there is to it. And I think it's wrong for you to have to go to work with bags under your eyes. You've been having trouble getting up in the morning lately. Well, you pay more attention to me than I thought. If you're so concerned, you can sleep on a couch then. No way. I prefer the bed. Then why are you... If you insist you absolutely want to sleep on the couch, then who am I to stop you? But I'm going to bed now, so... Good night. Somehow we're gonna manage to wear me down. Now we're we're both in bed. The same bed. I was pretty sure I would rest better on the couch than here, but both physically and mentally. To start with, being able to sense her presence behind me was incredibly distracting, and there was the worry that I might accidentally roll over and crush her. Worst of all was her body heat. I wasn't accustomed to being able to, being able to feel someone, anyone so close. Don't you dare turn around, okay? I don't want to have to spend all night with your face in mine. Said the girl and sister used the bed tonight? Christ. Okay, fine. I won't turn around. So get some damn sleep. She stared as, as a corpse behind me. But I could feel the tension in the air nonetheless. What was she getting worked up about? Jeez. The longer the silence continued, the more uncomfortable it grew. I sighed and let it hang in the air before bringing it with a Hey! She lurched slightly at the sound of my voice. Then after another brief pause, she responded with a what? You can't sleep, Mary can't talk for a little. I don't mind, but what would we talk about? Hmm, how about you finally tell me why it is you ran away from home? You really want to know? Of course I do. So... You can give me your unsolicited advice. Oh, yeah. I did say something like that at a cafe a couple weeks ago. It wasn't what I wanted to say, though. But maybe now, with her this close, I can stop putting on so much of an act. Maybe I can treat you a little better. Because I'm sincerely curious. I want to push my views onto you. I just want to get to know you better. Is curiosity such a bad thing? No, it's not. But my reasons are boring and trite. The truth is only going to disappoint you. I'm not asking because I want to hear a good story. Do you believe in God? What? God? Where, where did that come from? I'm asking about you, not... Just answer the question. Honestly, no. I don't believe in God. Not that I explicitly 
believe there isn't one either. But true believers are a minor minority in this day and age, especially in first world countries. Churches have largely become venues for weddings and funerals. Right. Not many people believe in God in modern times, but I do. I believe in the Heavenly Father who watches me from above. I believe he has the power to cause miracles, and I believe that he has a divine plan, which we mortals are incapable of straying from. Many generations ago, that was normal, and those without faith were burned at the stake. That's no longer true anymore. Today, if you say you love God, people will think you're old-fashioned, or worse yet, incapable of rational thought at all. She was right. These days, people weren't punished for being faithless or believing in other gods, as would have happened in ancient times. And for that, the world is a more peaceful and accepting place now. But these societal rules for acceptance have not gone away, merely transformed over the centuries. While you wouldn't be burned at stake anymore, those with beliefs deemed unacceptable were still made into outcasts. Something I was guilty of doing as well. I frequently found myself frustrated at people who didn't see the world the same as me. I was closed-minded, unable to adapt to different ideas. Instead, I threw them to the curb, making no attempt to reconcile or understand, refusing to examine my own beliefs. When we first met, I probably would have laughed in her face if she told me she believed in God. The Heavenly Father, His divine plan, fantasy nonsense, all of it. I wouldn't even given her the time of the day. My mother is a much more devout believer than me, though. Or perhaps you could say she depended on her faith. I told you about my father, right? And how I've never met him before? Well, supposedly the divorce was very difficult for my mother. So, she took to attending a local church, bringing me with her. There she found fellowship, relief from her loneliness, salvation. There I had a home, a place to learn right from wrong. And a place to confess my sins. What would a kid your age have to confess? Isn't it a whole thing for people old enough to take responsibility for their actions? It wasn't anything I did. I have the black mark of sin on my very soul. Excuse me? What? My soul did not pass through the gate of God's judgment before entering a new mortal body. It is still blemished by the sins of my previous life. So they told me I must atone for those sins in this life. Who the hell told you that? The priest of the church? Listen to me, Morgana. You're allowed to believe whatever you want. I'm not going to get on your case for being abnormally pious. I draw the line at atoning for something you never did. It's ridiculous to think you're responsible for actions taken at past life. Reincarnation blathers bad enough on its own. And there's no reason to let vague notions of karma dictate your life now. At first, I felt the same way as you. Why should I have to pay for sins I have no knowledge of? But the bishop and my mother, they told me that the hideous scars on my body were evidence of the sins of my soul. I saw many doctors about them, but not one could identify the cause. Which meant it couldn't be a physical ailment, but a sign from God, a curse to always remind me of how tainted my soul is. This absolute horseshit. Your mother and that bishop were just swindling you. And I probably would have agreed with you if I didn't have these memories that don't belong to me. What? Memories that don't... The golden fetal wheat immediately popped into my mind. I had memories that didn't belong to me too. 
and um, a hazy silhouette of a girl. In these memories, I cast a curse upon others for centuries. And I brought suffering to good people around them as well. I spread nothing but hatred. I resided in a dismal gray mansion with the air of death filling its halls. And in it, I trapped the souls of three men. Three men and the people closest to them, condemned for eternity for no reason other than their association. You think I'm crazy. I can see it. But think whatever you want, because I know how it sounds. Sal souls and curses and haunted mansions. It's all childish silliness. It was childish and silly. It was the kind of fantasy nonsense that had no place outside fiction. But I couldn't carry the words from my mind to my mouth. A chill ran through, down my spine, like a bony finger sliding down the skin, until it stopped in my heart. It was as if I was trying to say Magana was talking about me. My mind was just playing tricks. There wasn't any evidence, but the thought wouldn't leave me. Is something the matter? Did you fall asleep? No, of course not. I'm not going to doze off in the middle of a conversation. I was just thinking about... Uh, never mind. Uh, go on. No matter how crazy anyone thinks it sounds, I still have these memories. I remember cursing those men for centuries, destroying their souls. And while they're not terribly vivid, I feel an inexpressible certainty that they are indeed real. So when they told me my scars were punishments for my sins, all the pieces fell into place. I made the three men atone for their sins, but I neglected to do anything about my own. So that's the purpose I've been given in this life, to acknowledge and repent for my past transgressions. Assuming everything you said is true, and to do all that, I still don't think you have anything to atone for. You had a reason to curse those men, to have done something deserving of your error. It's they who should be paying. Magana wasn't the kind of girl to hate sun for an insignificant slight. While she could be vicious and caustic sometimes, she wasn't actually cruel. She was a sweet, selfless girl with a big heart. And the proof is right here in her insisting she needed to atone for sins that she had no direct hand in. Of course, that was who she was. She would carry the whole world on her back if she could. So when she says she cursed three men for eternity, there's necessarily more than, more, more there than a minor grudge. Something bad enough had happened to push her to take such drastic measures. Someone had mistreated her so badly as to deserve an eternity of torment. Someone had. But, regardless, it's stupid for anyone to have to pay for the mistakes of a previous life, and shouldn't let that dictate how you live now. Was that true, though? Obviously, she didn't need to atone for anything. But what about those who had hurt her? If they were alive now, too, would I be able to say the same thing about them? Was it right to just let them move on? God, where's this train of thought even going? I had no idea anymore. For whatever reason, I was proceeding on the assumption that reincarnation and past lives were real, which had no scientific foundation. Was Magana running off on me? I need to cool my head. There's no such thing as reincarnation. These memories out of places I've never been and things I've never done were all fantasy. How's any of that supposed to be relevant, though? How's it lead to you sleeping in a park? Be patient. I've always believed that because of my transgressions. I have a responsibility to accept whatever happens to me. 
but something happened that I couldn't possibly bring myself to accept, and so I ran away. Because that was the simplest, most painless way to handle it. So, what happened? I didn't have to see her face as though she was faltering, unsure if she wanted to continue. I should have told her she didn't have to force herself, but I couldn't bring myself to stop her. I wanted to get to the root of the problem. I needed to know what, was going, she, what she was going through. Not out of some excessive degree of care for her, though, but largely for my own personal satisfaction. After a long silence, she muttered in a voice so soft, the pin dropping would drown it out. I... I am of no use to my mom. Uh, did... Did your mother actually say that to you? My mom... My mother recently remarried to a man she met at the church. He's religious, so of course he's a good man. She was only absent-mindedly. She didn't seem to be hearing me at all. This wasn't like her. She was very direct when she spoke. It was making me uneasy. A shadowy figure seemed to tower over me, so I blurted something out without thinking to try to chase it off. Being religious, religious doesn't make one a good person. That's not how it works. There are bad people everywhere. Not even heaven is an exception. Please, tell me what happened, Morgana. The longer she stayed silent, the more overpowered my anxiety grew. Why wouldn't she answer me? Why wouldn't she tell me? A black fog swirled around me, slowly filling the room. A black poison coursed through my veins, infecting my entire body. Did he do something unspeakable to you? Balanced rage swelled up within me, too great for me to restrain. Because if he did, I'll fucking kill him. Calm down. He didn't hit me. He didn't touch me. He didn't do any of the things you're worried about. Just like that, she pacified the hatred rising within me, leaving me aghast at my own reaction. How did I just seriously entertain the thought of killing a man? And for what? Because I jumped to the wrong place? the worst possible conclusion and completely baseless one at that I wasn't being reasonable I was acting like a feral dog I was second away from ripping a man's throat out for setting foot in my territory it was absurd it didn't matter how enchanted by her I was that was enough reason to murder her stepfather I like to hope I had at least that much of my sanity intact all he did was tell the truth. He's in the right, and I'm in the wrong. Stop being around the bush. If, if all you did was tell the truth, you would have run away. I suppose, maybe. He told me that I sickened him. The sound of my voice, the color of my eyes, the way I act. Most of all, the hideous scars on my body. He says he's physically repulsed by everything about me. He married my mother because he loved her, not because he cared about me. So I guess I only served to get between them. Or perhaps my entire existence was offensive to him. He told me many times that the world would be a better place without me. That everyone would be happier if I'd never been born. How the hell is that telling the truth? Are you implying you deserve verbal beatings from your father figure because of some perceived sins committed in a previous life? A grown man has no place talking to a child like that, let alone his goddamn stepdaughter. He's the one wrong here, on all accounts. Your mother just lets him deride you like that? My mother, she supports him in all his decisions. And I support her in that. She raised me as a single mother for so long. She deserves this chance to be happy. It's 
so I don't want to do anything to sabotage that. You deserve to be happy just as much as she does. God teaches that the righteous must place the needs of others before their own. Who cares what- Oh, for Christ's sake. You have no problem telling me to burn in hell. Surely you have enough vitriol to spare for them. I don't get it. Why set up for the man who deserves your anger the most? Because he's family. Being family doesn't give you a free pass to do whatever the hell you want. And someone being family doesn't obligate you to love them. Of course the church wasn't going to agree with me. You were supposed to show unconditional love to your family if they weren't showing you any love in return. I would have taken the caustic venom tongue of Morgana over this meek, self-sacrificing side absolutely any day. No matter how you may choose to deny it, this is abuse. Words can do so much damage as a first, as a fist. Tell me, how old are you? None of this I'm in my twenties crap. I want you to tell me the truth. Sixteen. As I suspected, she was a full decade younger than me, but having an actual confirmation made it that much more real. It was sick of me that a 16-year-old girl had to live like that. She was at an age where she still needed her parents, yet neither of them were there for her. Do you go to school? I did before running away. I'd never missed a day or even been late. Alright, then you should keep going. A lot more options when you graduate high school. Once you have, move out straight away. That's what your asshole a stepfather wants anyway. I'm not telling you to do this for your family's sake though, but for yours. Don't let him tear your life to shreds. But, but what would I even do once I'm out of the house? I don't have to tell you how little about the world I know. I have no goals, no aspirations, no idea where to find any either. You don't need to know what you want immediately. Finding is a process. There's, there's a whole wide world out there that you never had the opportunity to explore. And um, you have me here. You can come back here as often as you want while you're working on graduating. In time you find something you want to do. And I'll... I'll help you do it. Is that not... good enough? Do you think there's nothing I can do to help? You're essentially not the best for the job. You get impatient and frustrated whenever I'm trying to feel my way around. And you like to ramble on and on about useless trivia. You're the meanest teacher I've ever had. I... I, uh... I'll work on that. I'm kidding. <laughs> as long as you don't shout, you're as fine as you are. Oh, well... That's a relief. Hmm... Until now, I never knew that having someone get upset on your behalf could take so much weight off your shoulders. Oh, I'll happily get a sub at anyone if it makes you feel better. Luckily for us, I'm told I do have a bit of a temper. Please keep your temper in check. I fear you might actually attack someone if you get too angry. I, I would never, at least not where you had to see it. I'd prefer you didn't hurt anyone regardless of whether I'm watching. I trust you'll do the right thing, though. After all, you are kind at heart, whether you show it or not. Now that's the last thing I expected to hear from you. Is it we're going to end tomorrow or something? I take it back. You're not kind at all. You're just obnoxious and nosy. I need to learn to keep my mouth shut. The 
Thank you. Good night. Of course. Good night, Morgana. Sweet dreams. As I feared, her situation is far from ideal. Hopefully, she was able to find a glimmer of hope after a conversation. Family troubles weren't something that went away overnight, though. For I knew things were much worse than she let on. The point that maybe even graduating high school was unrealistic. If that were the case, going back to school might not have been the best advice after all. All I could do was pray that things weren't that bad. My advice was too vague in general to actually fix anything. But that was the best I could do for someone who was essentially still a stranger. Her family was a complex, complete black box. Could see only the outcome, not the process. And this frustrated me to no end.